doing there, buddy? You trying to get up here? Do you need me to carry you? Oh boy, yeah, you're not gonna make that. <laughs> it's a good thing there's a pile of soft stuff down there to catch you. Hey, chill out. I'll come carry you up. Hey, buddy. Good morning. I am feeling really, really good. Champ, are you feeling good? Now that you're up on deck, come on. I gotta do some extra building to make Champ a little bit more comfortable. As you saw, he's got a hard time getting out of the uh, hulls. Gotta carry him out of the hulls, gotta carry him on the deck. And, uh, well, he does seem very comfortable though, I will say. Like, he's not, hasn't whined once. His tail's been wagging the whole time. He seems really happy. Um, and I am happy too, actually, because I got out here and I was expecting to just barely survive. I was expecting an empty shell with rotting wood, and I was expecting, you know, just uh, just to be a little bit depressed by it. But the reality is actually a lot better. I have found that, uh, yeah, the wood is a lot more stable. There's a lot more here already functioning. The stoves are both functioning so I can heat myself. It's already decently insulated in one of the cabins. Um, like, I could survive the whole winter without doing a single thing, without changing anything. Um, so that's really good. There are some things we're missing, and that's the name of the game today. I want to do some inventory, kind of figure out what I need and uh, what I already have. But um, I'm calling on you guys a little bit, because as you see, this is a gigantic project, and already a lot of you are lining up to come and help me, which is, I like, that's crazy. And I'm so grateful for that, because this project, it's the kind of project I don't think many other people could really take on, but because I have you guys following and, you know, the fact that I'm a young guy and I'm kind of a little crazy and I'm broke, this is the perfect project because this boat is cheap and, you know, it's too much work for most people. But now that I have you guys lining up, I mean, like, come on, we can do this. This would be really, really cool. <sighs> so, yeah, if you're interested in coming and helping and building, um, all I can offer you is a bunk to sleep on and some tasty food and the rest is up to uh, us to figure it out, but yeah, I'm surprised by the outreach already without even mentioning that, that you guys are that on board. For those of you who want to help along that um, can help along either on Patreon or whatever, um, or, on, or by coming and helping, I actually also really need uh, hand-me-downs hand me downs. A lot of you have been sending me books and other sailing equipment and it's been super super handy but uh, with the inventory I'm doing today I'm gonna have a list of objects that I don't have on board and um, if you've guys got old beat up versions of that that you don't use anymore and you want to hand down to some young kid so he can build his boat then that would be amazing. That would be absolutely amazing and that would definitely get me a lot closer to making this boat launch without uh, going completely broke. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. All right, let's do some inventory. Well, as you can tell, the starboard hull has most of the stuff in it, and it's in better shape. Um, it is where I slept last night, and it's also got some safety equipment. It's got flares, it's got a signaling kit, um, it's got a little bit of a manual horn there. My cookware is down here. I got a basic collection of cookware. I'm gonna hold off on investing into uh, cast iron just yet because uh, I'm still working with camp stoves. Um, I'm in the talks right now with some sponsors to hook up the kitchen with some cool cookware because eventually I want to go gas free on this whole boat. So I want everything as much as possible to no, use no fossil fuels to just be a completely green boat. And that will be a real challenge. Um, but I think it is very doable. And I think honestly that in the 21st century, that's now the cheaper way to go. So. Um, since I'm budget conscious, that is what I'll be doing. So yeah, live aboard stuff. We've got a fair collection of things here. We got an inverter. We got a little basic cruddy little solar panel out back. The old uh, cell phone tower batteries are barely holding on, but uh, they will be enough to charge all my equipment. I'll have to toss them eventually. But uh, for now, they're doing the job. I got a VHF uh, radio, which looks like it needs a little bit of repair. I got a few fans here and there and I've got two heaters. So live aboard, I'm doing okay. I've got most of the basics covered. I've got a water tank, not a water maker. 
there's a lot of electronic instruments I need. There's no GPS on board. There's no uh, um, chart plotting hardware, software, anything like that. Um, there's no shower in bo on board yet. There's yeah, there's a lot of gaps in the in the long term live offshore kind of uh, live aboard lifestyle. But for now, uh, for the close to shore or uh, early this morning at 4 a.m. on shore. <laughs> live aboard lifestyle, then um, yeah, it's, it's okay. We're getting started. I need a fridge. That's the, I think that's gonna be my main concern for live aboard stuff is I need to get a fridge sorted out because so far I've just kind of collected things that can handle ambient fall temperatures. But um, if I wanna get meats on board or if I wanna do uh, um, any extensive cooking for my guests, I need a fridge. So I will be getting a cooler for a while Eventually, when I get the top deck figured out and I have the kitchen up there, then I'll get a real, real fridge. Um, probably a top-down feeder kind of thing. So yeah, that is where I'm at. Live aboard, we're doing okay. But um, in terms of sailing equipment, leaves a lot to be desired. All right, so sailing gear. First of all, Vern hooked me up with two dinghies. They kind of a temporary solution for now. With uh, you know a couple people coming on board the boat, that little. Uh, fiberglass dinghy is actually not a bad option at all and with a little electric thruster motor on there I can probably uh, make a good clip and get around to some of the other islands explore a little bit have some fun with that um, but eventually I will want to change that out I have ambitions of buying a little hobby uh, sailboat dinghy kind of conversion so that I can practice sailing and uh, get out there and, and make some more distance too and explore a little bit while I'm building the ship because you know you're getting to days off and I want to keep learning as I go, so that's what I'll be doing. Um, in terms of hardware that's on the boat, well, there's not all that much, I'm not going to lie to you. So far, I've only spotted one cleat, uh, <laughs> but uh, of the stuff that is there, interestingly enough, worms are usually lashed on, and this one is not. The original owner made galvanized steel clamps that run over each beam with uh, rubber shock absorbers to kind of perform the same task as a lot of the rope is. Um, I'm not super jazzed about it, but at the same time, it's actually a lot sturdier than the ropes and it's not something that I'll have to replace. So I'm just going to shore them up and add some new rubber, clean them up a little bit and probably continue using them. One of the goals of this boat was to build it such that I could repair anything anywhere. Um, and that's why I really wanted to avoid dedicated steel components on the regular because I wasn't planning on carrying a welder on board. So I didn't want to have to weld something that snapped or broke. And uh, I was looking at um, traditional style rigging, so no wires either. Um, again, not 100% on that. It will come down to the wire of deciding what I can actually get. So far I've got one aluminum mass that looks like it was probably never on this ship. Um, it looks like it came from something else and it was buzz sawed off. So we will see what we're gonna actually do with that. A lot of the worms use uh, wooden mass. Um, and I'm not averse to using a wooden mass. I mean, aluminum would be nice too. It's a little bit lighter and I'm gonna be putting two masts aboard this ship. So I want it to be a smaller mass, a little bit lighter. And uh, it'll be nice because it won't be as tall and the sails will be easier to control single-handedly if I need to. And yeah, there's a lot of advantages to putting two masts aboard. It's also twice the amount of equipment to break down, so yeah, you know, I like redundancy though. The boat currently has no rudders. <laughs> That's a bit of a problem, but the uh, rear gunnels, it's a strange design. It's not usual to warm designs, but they made these flat backs, which I'm not actually all that against it because it's actually increased the space in the back um, little tiny storage lockers. They're actually quite large now. I could turn them into a separate berth now. But unfortunately, one of them is badly rotted, so um, that will be a haul-out, tear-down kind of situation. I'm going to have to haul that thing out and, uh, and tear that whole piece right off, all the way back as far as the rot goes, and replace it all. But uh, all things considered, considering most of the haul is good, I mean, that's not too bad. And that's even kind of a solution that I might be able to just sort out by beaching the boat, too. I won't even, might even, not even have to haul it out. We will see. All right, so where am I at? Sailing equipment, it's pretty terrible. Don't have much. So that one I need. Cleats, dead eyes, I don't know. Any kinds of pulleys, I need a lot of it. And I need a lot of it that'll last. Galvanized steel seems like a good option. A lot of people are using bronze. 
because it doesn't seem to go bad in the salt air. Um, stainless steel obviously is nice, but quite expensive. So we'll figure it out as the as the uh, project continues. That will be up there on the list of stuff to sort out. We have a winch for our anchor, which is uh, aluminum, but we don't have an anchor currently. Um, we are anchored with some old broken down anchors, but yeah, I'll be buying some, some new stuff. We also only have a few bump stops. I think there's only two on board. So I'll need some of those uh, little inflatable bumpers. Yeah, all right, cool. Let's talk a little bit about the layout of this boat. So as you can see, this boat is pretty big and it's hard to grasp just the size of it in uh, one photo or one video because it really doesn't do it justice. From the main cabin up here, you gain access to the main hulls, starboard and port side. All right, from the starboard and port side cabins, this is the main cabin and it's raised so you get pretty much headroom here. And then up front, as you see, there's one another cabin there. And there's another section equally sized back here. This one has the engine in it currently. Now, there's also, forward and aft of these cabins, on each side, there's another cabin. And those are currently just storage lockers. But, with a, a little bit of finagling, the rear ones are big enough that you could put a single berth in there. So, if you're doing the math, that means you have five separate sections on each hull. So at five separate sections, that's a lot of space. Um, now, I'm not gonna turn each and every one of them into usable space. I think the forward will, little uh, storage lockers are gonna stay storage lockers, but uh, that still leaves me with eight um, separate rooms, essentially. So yeah, because the plan for this boat is to have a lot of you guys on board, to have a lot of other YouTubers on board, to have a lot of my friends and family on board, the people you've met on the channel over the last two years, there are a lot of them are already coming. They're planning on getting up here. So that's gonna be really exciting, but, um, and this boat is well suited to it because I can put a lot of berths in here. I'm trying to get it to the point where I have five berths. So that means I'm gonna have some crew that's gonna be on board for months, maybe even a year, some of them, and then I'll have some crew that's on board for, you know, a week at a time, just trying it out. So, so yeah, there's a lot of space on board. And once this cabin is up on top, that'll be the communal area, and I can turn all the space below deck into, uh, yeah, berths and heads. Just nice, cozy, dry <laughs> beds and nice warm spots to store your stuff. And then up here, will the real living will be happening and the real boating, so. Yeah, that's the plan. It is one hell of a plan. But it's let me with something else to think about. Do I widen this boat or not? Because this boat is only held together with beams, the boat can actually be widened. It's currently 20 feet wide, and I can change it to a 24 foot wide, which is the standard for the uh, Tiki 46s that are currently being made. With that, I get a little bit more stability on the open seas, um, and I get a lot more square footage between the, uh, the hulls for my main communal space, which is very, very attractive. Um, however, it also means that this new cabin top, which is actually much better shaped than it looked in the photos, this cabin top would have to be torn up. And I'm definitely gonna tear up parts of it, but uh, it didn't really entice me to tear the whole thing to bits. Now I could just cut it out down the center and then stretch it, widen it, um, that's an option. And since I'm dropping the floor, I'm looking to make the whole area about six foot seven, six foot eight foot tall, so uh, I can stand up and walk around in it nice and comfortably. Where I'm gonna put the steering and the pilot house kind of stuff, where I'm gonna put um, the kitchen and where I'm gonna put the uh, um, living space. <laughs> it's a bit of a bit of an open plan right now, but. Um, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely leaning towards widening this boat a little bit. Since I've got to replace half the beams anyway, so I might as well just replace them all and widen the whole thing by four feet. It's, it's when I say things like that that I start grasping just how big of a project this is going to be. Alright, so first things first, I have to take Champ for a walk because he's not boat trained. So we got to take him to shore so he can go to the bathroom. Wanna go? You ready to go? Wanna go for a walk? Yeah, you do? Alright, well let's do this. Come here, buddy. Don't squirm, you squirm, you squirm, you better. All right, I'm gonna build you a ramp, Jesus. Guys, this is my worst nightmare. There are
crabs living on my ship. Away, get away, get away, get away, get away, get away. Oh. Bastards. I mean, crabs are not as terrifying as their cousins, the lobster, but I still, I don't like them very much. They freak me out. All of you dog owners that don't want to get up and walk your dog first thing in the morning, at least you don't have to row them out. I gotta train this dog to pee off the edge of the boat. <laughs> uh, it'll take a while. Call dog and learn new tricks so quick. Alright. We've made landfall. Oh, we made landfall. Oop. <laughs> It's a lot easier if you go this way, buddy. Good morning, Vern. Sleep good? I slept like a baby. Did you? It was great. This thing does not move. Okay. I could not make this thing wiggle back and forth or anything. It's like sleeping on a, in an apartment building or something. And you're gonna have your keys mixed up. This is locked over there. Not, yep, know. no, I put that there for now. Uh, okay. Well. No, uh, you grab that string right there and pull from the, the engine thing. Pull it. Yeah, that's what, that's a shut off for it. Okay. See, so yeah, everything was ran upstairs. So, but see it right there? Yeah. When you pull it, see that goes down? Okay. Okay, so then, here, you hold that. Okay. Put the fires in. <laughs> she shakes like crazy, eh? Got the thing at the back shut off. See, there's a lever here? Yeah. Well, that lever is what engages the hydraulic pump. Yeah. And then the levers up top do, um, you know, but if they leak, you know, they're getting wore. They're all old. They all have to be replaced. Mm -hmm. And that's what I was saying about, like, having a, a small, but they're not small, you know, but the ones that come, these ones are probably not too bad, but all the outside ones are shot, you know. Oh right. uh, yeah, I'm not super keen on this diesel system to be honest. Well, no, I'm more just happy that it's running so that it'll sell for a decent amount. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I'll be selling off parts to get this thing out. But uh, basically, I'm gonna have to find someone who wants it. And they're gonna come in here, see it running, and then they go, okay. Well, then, you can, what you need to do is at my place sometime we'll phone up there, Larry, like, and then you guys have to talk about how much you know you'd want for it and right. stuff if he had. Um, Right on guys, well we know the diesel engine runs now, we got the generator up and running a little bit, although I got some work there. I'm trying to make a little bit of a, a plan of attack, since this is my first full day here. Thought I would do some more research and uh, check out the island, check out the rudders, because they are over at uh, Vern's place. Um, and start collecting some materials, because I think I'm going to focus... Number one task is getting this thing structurally sound. So that means these rotting beams have got to go, and uh, we'll be replacing that. Number two task is getting the cabins ready to accept some guests so I can get a little bit more work done a little bit faster. They get quite a bit bigger, but not a whole lot. This is and three feet of water, like it comes right up where we come down the steps. That's the design of it. Nice set of boots on her, eh? I gotta say, Vern, your place is uh, pretty wild. Your place is pretty wild. Water tank, not water tank, and all the coppers. It went from one beam to the other. 
the other. Oh, right, so this is yeah. in between the beams in the center of the boat. Yeah, there's another thing on. Because here's one of them that's on there, and you know, they're not the best looking, but they're, you know, there's one there, and then one's. sanding and glassing over it. Yeah. Right? This one, the whole wooden part is going to be there, so i got to cut that out. It doesn't have to be. And then the shafts go down. Yeah, there they are. Well, that was pretty awesome. It was pretty cool to get a little tour of the island, get an idea of the hardware store, what kind of materials I have there. I have their phone number now, so I'll be uh, calling them up and doing some lumber orders first off. And then, uh, yeah, getting a tour of Vern's place. I cannot believe how much stuff he's got there. It's gonna be a huge resource when it comes down to uh, all those nickel and dime kind of things. Cause I get to call Vern first and be like, hey, listen, do you have, you know, these uh, cleats or this kind of pulley or whatever it is I need. And uh, I have a feeling like most of the time he will. And yeah, I'd much rather restore something old and spend the time doing that than uh, spend a fortune buying new stuff all the time. So what a great guy. I'm so happy I have that kind of resource of knowledge and spare parts and all kinds of stuff. And he's very invested in seeing this boat uh, out in the blue water again. So. Oh, nice to have a guy like that on your team. After touring around so much today, I feel like I need to get a little bit of work done before I make some dinner. So uh, let's get some sanding done. <laughs> Thank you. 